The Auschwitz concentration camp is one of the worst Nazi inventions of World War I. Monstrous experiments on human beings. Meager rations, thanks to which it was barely possible to stay on the edge between life and death. Extremely hard labor, where exhausted and weakened prisoners fell down and could not get up again. Gas chambers that were seen as deliverance. It was hell, but not heavenly hell, but earthly hell. In this inhuman hell, against all the laws of nature, new lives were born. The births took place in complete unsanitation, in a dirty barracks on bare bunks. No German doctor even came close to the women in labor. It is not worthy of true Aryans to touch unclean races. Let's not talk about medical care. For two years in Auschwitz, a midwife from Poland, Stanislawa Lushinska, assisted women in labor. She was a prisoner like everyone else. Stanislawa always remembered her duty as a doctor and could not leave pregnant women without help. Pani Leszczynska, only 20 years after the war, was able to describe all the horrors that went on in the death camp. I worked in three barracks made of rough boards with huge gaps between them. They were blown through, the heating was very poor, and it was terribly cold in winter. The women were on naked bunks three stories high. I did not have the most basic things. Antiseptics, bandages, anesthetics, even water, wrote the Polish midwife. During her two years in the camp, Stanislawa Leszczynska delivered more than 3,000 babies. She was assisted by doctors who were among the prisoners. One day, a pedantic SS doctor ordered the midwife to submit a report on the number of deaths among laboring women and babies. What was his surprise, mixed with anger and envy, when he learned that all the women and babies had survived? The German doctor was sure that only in sterile and highly equipped clinics, and even then not always, can the results of 100% survival rate be achieved. The question, how is it possible in such disgusting conditions, froze in his eyes. He found no answer. But the women prisoners not only had to give birth, they had to figure out how and what to swaddle the baby in. Denying themselves food, they exchanged their meager rations for sheets, which were then used to make diapers. They washed them right in the barracks and dried them on their bodies. The fate of children born after 1943 was slightly better than those born earlier. Himmler's program to increase the number of pure-blooded Aryan nation did not give the expected results. Therefore, babies born in concentration camps with blue eyes and blonde hair were separated from their mothers, sent to German families in Germany, and determined to belong to the dominant race. Other babies suffered a different fate. For a mother who gave birth in agony, seeing her living child, there was nothing more terrible than losing her child. I write this so that people will remember the evil done by the Nazis. I write in the name of mother and child. I write for the sake of life on earth. I hope that all decent people of the world will hear me. And if evil comes again, these people will stand up to protect the life of every baby who has come into this world. Finish the description of the midwife from Poland, who never for a moment forgot her sacred duty as a doctor and a human being.